Okay, so uh, we are going to do the depth in chemistry specimen two paper today. So let's make a star. So the first one is a titration, and it wants me to uh, identify the apparatus that I should use to make up an acid solution to 250 centimetres cubed. Well, of course, that is a volumetric flask. Measure out 25.0 centimetres cubed of the acid solution. That is going to be a pipette. So the acid reacts in a one-to-one -one molar ratio. Calculate the molar mass of the acid. Okay, right, so I know that I have got 25 centimetres cubed of uh, 0.120 moles per decimeter cubed set of French oxide. So the first thing I can work out is moles of NaOH, and that's going to be the concentration times the volume over a thousand. So if I do that, I get it to be 3.03 .03 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. It's a one-to-one -one reaction, so that must mean I have got, that's the same number of the moles of acid. So moles of acid is equal whoops, to 3.03 uh, .03 times 10 to the minus three, but that is in 25 centimeters cubed. Originally the acid was in 250, so the moles of acid in 250 is going to be 10 times that, so it's going to equal 3.03 .03 times 10 to the minus two in 250 centimeters cubed. Then to work out the molar mass, the molar mass is going to equal the uh, mass that I used over number of moles. The mass that I used, if we go out here, is 2.24 grams. So the MR is going to equal 2.24 divided by 3.03 .03 times 10 to the minus two. And that gives me 73.9 grams per mole. So the student isn't confident that their titer is accurate. What could they do next to reduce any random error in their titer? Well, they could repeat until they get two titers that were within 0.1 centimetres cubed of each other, and then they would take the average of those two readings. So first of all, repeat until you get uh, two within 0.1 of each other, and then take the average. Right, so now I've got a question about alkenes. Uh, the first thing it wants me to do is describe how a sigma bond forms. Well, a sigma bond is the overlap of orbitals directly between the atoms. Remember, a pi bond is where it goes above and beyond, the, uh, above and below the sigma bond. A uh, sigma bond is where you get direct overlap between the bonding atoms, like so. State the bond angle is shaped around each carbon atom of the CC double bond. So it's looking at these. Well, let's have a look. I have got three bonding pairs. We know there are no non-bonding pairs because carbon can only form four bonds. So the bond angle is going to be 120 degrees C and the shape is our old favourite trigonal planar. Right, so first mechanism, uh, which is propene reacting with bromine. This is of course electrophilic addition. So let's do this. Outline the mechanism including curly arrows. So first of all, the bromine is delta plus, delta minus. First curly arrow comes there to form a bond with that bromine, and then that bond must break. Remember, a curly arrow can either start from a lone pair or the middle of a bond. So there we go. What will that produce? Well, 
that carbon there that will now have a positive charge because he's lost his share of the double bond and that has formed a carbon bromine bond there. I've got Br minus like so. Don't forget your lone pair on bromine and that goes like so to produce my product like so with the double bond having two bromine atoms across it like so. What does a curly arrow represent? It represents the movement of a pair of electrons. Always remember the pair of electrons. Right, pentwonine is an alkene with molecular form of C5H10. It does not show stereoisomerism. Explain why. Well, the reason is that one of the carbons in the CC double bond has the same um, group attached. So this is the end of pent 1E, and on the end carbon, they both have hydrogens attached. So it doesn't matter which way those hydrogens are, they're always hydrogens. So it doesn't show EZ isomerism. Right, so let's look at an example um, of where we do see cis trans isomerism. Remember, um, for a cis isomer, both the hydrogens are on the same side. So this is going to be uh, pent2e, first of all, and this is cis pent2e, because the hydrogen's on the same side. For z, or sorry, for trans, rather, they are on the opposite side, like so. So the following molecule shows EZ isomerism now, and it wants me to identify whether it is the E or the Z isomer. So we need to look at the atomic numbers of each one. So uh, fluorine is going to be nine, carbon is six, this carbon is six, and that carbon is six. So this has priority over that. I now need to decide which one has priority over here. I go to the next one and it's hydrogen here. The next one here is oxygen, which is um, eight, and therefore that has the highest priority for um, that side, um, and therefore is the E isomer because the highest priority groups are opposite to each other.